This is going to be a story of how less than three weeks fundamentally changed our lives and why we're going all in on YouTube. This video is just going to be me, and I'm calling this series, Hi Dave, Where's Chloe? The aim is for this to be a behind the scenes kind of vlog, to share our YouTube journey so that we can maybe help future creators. We're a bit behind schedule, but I think after the next few weeks, we'll be able to post regularly again. There's just been so much going on, wrapping up my full-time job, learning all this YouTube stuff as we go. Since it's the last month at my full-time position, I'm going into the office today to clear it out. That was really random. Looks like someone lost their toy. I've already been in the office actually a few times, slowly kind of just cleaning, packing things up. So there's not actually much, not much for me to do, but I am meeting up with my colleagues. Those three weeks back in February really was the last drop in the bucket that pushed me and Chloe to go all in on this YouTube. I think Chloe and I are very lucky and fortunate to be able to have this opportunity to do this. Got to the office. So at this place, you get your temp checked, and then to confirm you got it checked, you get a sticker so that people know you're okay. Hello? Right, well, desk is all clean now. Time to grab this and go home. Leaving the office now. Uh, gotta go pick up some stuff at the store. So when you think back on your life, what are the things that you remember? To me, it's these key moments that have a lasting impression on me. And I've had some really awesome moments in my life in the last few years. I've met Chloe, we've done some amazing trips together. We did a three week road trip. That's how we really fell in love with each other. We moved in together, we got married, we bought a house. I mean, these are serious big moments and I'm very lucky to have them. But as you get older, I find that it becomes like you're driving. If you ever driven on a highway, you probably understand what I'm saying is you remember your start you remember maybe some key places you stepped off and explored and you remember arriving at your destination. Those are the big things that you remember on that trip. But how many of you remember the in-between? The time where you're literally just sitting in the car, driving, and just trying to get to your next destination. There's these big gaps in between these big moments, big events that I just don't really have much memory about, except that I did it. it those days happened. So I'm here at the supermarket, picking up some limited edition cereal that my friends and family really want back in the States. Oh, they have some. Here it is. Limited edition checks green onion flavored cereal. If you want to know more about this, we did a video together, me and Chloe. Check up in the link up on top. And that trip back in February 2020 with Chloe really brought all that stuff to the forefront. It was going to be a huge family reunion. My grandmother was turning 94. It was my birthday, it was Chinese New Year, it was my cousin's birthday. So this was a really big trip. On top of that, I was gonna see a lot of friends I haven't seen in a long time, uh, go to my best friend's wedding, and visit a friend in LA before we flew back to Korea, all in three weeks. But when I landed, I found out my grandmother was in the hospital. And my grandmother passed away while I was there. But I was able to see her before she passed away. And she was a fighter, even down to the end. 
this was how much of a fighter my grandmother was. The doctor did not expect her to last more than a few days when she was diagnosed with pneumonia. But she lasted more than a week longer than the doctor expected. She was a mother of eight. They lived in Vietnam. The South and America forces lost the war. The North Vietnamese were prosecuting the Chinese population and were ethnically Chinese. So she had the foresight to get all of her family out of there. She changed all the currency to gold so that she can pay boat captains to ferry her family out. And I'm talking about small fishing boats. That is a long story on its own, but in the end, she got them out, resettled in the US, and they started from scratch. I wish I knew her better. You know, she looked after me when I was a kid. And it's something you don't really think about until you get older, until something like this happens and you think about, man, what was she really like? But I didn't get to know her as well as a person. And I regret that. So understandably, my dad was upset. His mother was in the hospital and the lack of sleep, the depression, the anxiety, it really affected my dad. And while I was there, he just said, hey, I think I'm having another heart attack. Luckily, the hospital was nearby. I took him to the ER and if any of you know, if you're having any symptoms related to heart attack, stroke, they rush you through. But it was flu season and the hospital was packed. They stuck us in this waiting area in the hallway. So I sat him down, my mom shows up and we're there sitting, waiting. I'm standing in front of him and at one point, you know, he passes out. I go to the nurse at the desk and in calm but urgent voice, I said, hey, my dad just collapsed, like we need help. But during that time when he's checking up on my dad, my dad just fully collapses, like just slouches over and just a girl in the corner who's also waiting, bless her soul, she just screams, help, help, this man needs help. Doctors, nurses were rushing over. Like, thank you. And they take him to triage. And triage is a place where you are in serious condition. And I'm having an out of body experience because the doctor is asking me a ton of questions. As I'm trying to calmly answer these questions so that they can help him as best as they can, I'm also thinking in my head, this might be the day that my dad dies. I just said, okay, just breathe and just tell the doctor everything you know so that she can help him. Thankfully, he's okay now. It turned out to be just a cocktail of anxiety, depression, stress, lack of sleep, and it wound up that he had the flu. And all that combined was just too much for him. So that was the second thing that happened during those three weeks. I was able to make it to my friend's wedding. Landed the day before, and it's one of my best friends, so I was really happy I made it to be part of that. And then after the wedding, we went to LA and uh, we went to visit my friend Alpha. She's a musician there. You should check out her stuff. When we were visiting my friend Alpha, we get a phone call from Chloe's family. And my Debu, or brother-in-law, he passed away. It was very sudden. I couldn't ex I, I, I couldn't believe it because he's he was 42. When we started dating, I found out very soon that I lived in the exact same apartment building as her younger sister and my brother-in-law. And because of that, we would get invited to have dinner, go out for drinks nearby. And he was always so nice to me. I think because of him, he gave me the chance for Chloe's family to get to know me a bit more. So yeah, we changed our flight just one day earlier to fly back to Korea. And this happened the same day we got news about the coronavirus outbreak in Daegu, the epicenter of the outbreak at the time. You know, we flew back to make it to the funeral. Literally got off the plane, got on a bus, went straight to the funeral. I'm just outside my house, so let's continue this inside. 
After the funeral, we quarantined our house for about three weeks. And Chloe and I had a pretty serious discussion about what was important in our lives. Because without realizing it, time flew by way too quick. And how and with who we're spending that time is what we started asking ourselves. How can we create the chance to have more meaningful and everlasting memories? Have more chances to spend time with people we care about? How can we sustain that lifestyle? And how do we do it together? And because of the pandemic, we can't travel internationally for a while. So we are going to use this opportunity to explore and discover Korea and use this time to learn and hone our skills to make quality YouTube content. And ultimately, the goal is to spend more time with you. We're still finding our strides so that we can release content on a regular basis. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and family. Hit the like button if you liked it. Click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you know when our next video comes out. And I hope to see you next time. Cheers.